So we're going to jump right into it. Tonight we're talking about interest rates, and it seems that cuts are finally on the horizon. As a matter of yes. fact, I see analysts in the U.S. predicting that the Fed might cut interest rates even before they are scheduled to, even before their next planned announcement because of you know the recent jobs numbers. What is going on and what should we all be making of this here in Jamaica? Well, Kalila, you raise a very important point that, you know, whatever happens in America does influence what happens out here. But Jamaica's central bank policy rates, as everyone knows, those are the rates that the central bank lends to commercial bank. And it's a tool, commercial banks, and it's a tool for controlling monetary policy. So when the rates go up, borrowing becomes more expensive and it reduces consumer spending, business investment, slowing down economic growth, etc. So lowering the policy rate, it makes borrowing cheaper, stimulates spending and investment, and it can boost economic growth and increase inflation. So Jamaica's policy rate, in as you know, has remained at 7% since November 2022. So it's been almost two years since at the rate has changed. The next monetary policy announcement in Jamaica is actually scheduled for August 20, so next week. <laughs> and people are waiting with bated breath to see what's supposed to happen. Most are going to are predicting, based on Governor Bayer's recent statement, that the rates will come down 7% for two years. And as you know, before COVID, the rates were, uh, when COVID hit in March 2020, the rate climbed, was at 0.5%. Mm -hmm. so not 5%, 0.5%. 0.5, so, a record low. 0.5, a record low for Jamaica. So now, when it's at, now that it's at 7%, it's not anticipated to go back as low as 0.5%. That's very low. Yeah, at, However, least not, at least not immediately not immediately or not in the, the near future. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Governor Biles spoke about this in his latest address to Parliament, that it's not expected to go at that low, but it is expected to come down because 7% is high. And um, if you if you think about Jamaica's target inflation, which is between 4 to 6%, that uh, in inflation is what usually drives whether or not the rate goes up and down, as you know. And our inflation has been within that range for a couple of months now. So people anticipate that because of that, that we should see a decline in the interest rates. And of course, that will stimulate spending and persons will be able to borrow at a lower cost because, you know, even though the, the the rates have not climbed as drastically as they once were. Remember, we used to have rates, the, the lending rates for personal loans and for, uh, well, for personal loans are in the rates of 15 and for mortgages, we used to have rates in the, the 20s. Now they're in the, the late, the low teens, the 10s, the 9s. If you're lucky, you can get an 8 or a 7. So we're hoping that when the policy rate drops, the blending rate will drop, and people will be able to invest more in their businesses by being able to borrow at cheaper rates. So what's happening in America? You asked that earlier. Um, so the U.S., they are also anticipated, as you mentioned, to cut their rates. Their rate is at 5.5% now, and they're supposed to cut it lower. Um, in September is when they plan to make their announcements for policy rate cuts. But as you said, things are going haywire <laughs> over there. Um, at, well, but before I go to, to the America, I just want to mention one more thing about Jamaica is that the impact of Hurricane Beryl, there are some thoughts out there that the impact of Hurricane Beryl will not lower the rate as um, drastically as, as some would hope, and we may not even see a lowering at all. Some surmise that we may not see a lowering at all because Hurricane Beryl has put a thrown a spoke in the wheel of, of what was intended to happen because right. of that inflation. Right. And being, being St. Elizabeth being most the hardest mm -hmm. hit. Breadbasket parish, and I've been seeing food. I've been seeing the pictures going around on WhatsApp with a tomato for a thousand dollars. Yes, and, and a sweet <laughs> I was just going to say that. So, yes, you see, and that, as your viewers would know, is a driver for inflation. Right. So the price is going up, there's these crazy prices for tomato and sweet pepper, etc. that may have an impact on Jamaica's ability to cut these interest rates. But we will see very soon, August the 20th, all of us should be tuning in to hear what the but, 
is going but to. But Governor Biles has also said that he's been waiting on the signal from the Fed, and the Fed is not due to make that announcement till September. Yeah, so that you made a good point. So we're ahead of them in terms of what's due to be announced. And so if they are not announcing until September, you said they might do it early. Um, but if they're not announcing until their scheduled date of, I think it's September the 20th, don't, if, I don't, if I'm not mistaken if they're not going to do it until then and um, then we would have to wait and see um, if we're going to use their signal to indicate what's going to happen out here but as you know I, we were meant i were speaking about this earlier the us is going through a little of a turmoil right now which persons surmise they may be on a brink of a recession and we hear that all the time right kalila we always hear oh the us might be going into a recession but why did it happen this time particularly it was as a result of uh, the jobs numbers, as you mentioned, the jobs numbers came out and it was below what was projected. I think it was 114,000 jobs and the projection was 175,000. So it was way below what was projected and, and people started to panic, I guess, and stocks prices started to go down. And so it had a ripple effect on, on the economy there. The, the, measure that people use though some persons use to indicate that the u.s may be going into a recession is the fact that the um the, infl was it the inflation rate the fact that the rates went much lower than not only that they went much lower than expected but there are other indicators the inflation rate as well as um the uh, labor the labor markets themselves have indicators that you know there are impending signs of a recession that could be happening in america but the latest policy the federal policy rate announcement will also impact what happens persons are saying if they don't cut the rates then the recession is is imminent that's what persons are saying on the streets yeah i see people saying that we are where we are or they are where they are in the united states because the fed took too long to act Right, exactly. Some persons surmise that they took too long to act. So, and you, and you know, they took a lot longer than we did. We were the, 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 the leaders, Jamaica was a leader in terms of how soon we went in, we did our first rate reduction in 2021, November, I believe. And they waited until March 2022 or way after we did. So as you said, if they took too long to, well, they took too long to implement it and now they're taking too long to bring it back down. So <laughs> um, we, and we're waiting on them to bring ours back down. And of, as you know, of course, once America, once something happens in America, as I say, if America sneezes, Jamaica catches a cold. So whatever they do, it has a ripple effect on us. If they go into a recession, you know what will happen here. Our tourism industry will be affected by that. We'll have a decrease in the remittances to Jamaica. We would have a reduced demand for exports from Jamaica. Things like that will definitely have a ripple effect throughout our economy. So it's not something that we want to look forward to at all. <laughs> Yeah, like they say, when America sneezes, Jamaica catch a cold. So right. we'll be in. This, the whole America is basically. A <laughs> couple of questions from the audience for you, Jillian. Sean wants to know, do you believe the Fed dropped rates because it was forced to is a good thing, especially since the effects of a rate drop takes time to permeate the economy? Are we looking at a recession? Well, it's a good thing for the consumers, but uh, as you know, that the balance is dropping the rates and controlling inflation. So um, they're trying to do their best to stimulate the economy by putting more money into the hands of people in the, in the economy. But that comes at a cost of inflation going out of control and things becoming more expensive. So it's a delicate balancing act that the government has, all governments have, and some governments rely on other governments to guide them on what to do. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's eminent. I think we've learned a lot of lessons from the past, 2008 being the, the most biggest, uh, well, the, the most recent big, big lesson. The COVID also had a lesson or two, but 2008 was the biggest lesson in recent times. And I think governments have learned a lot and they will do their best to, to use their fiscal policies and monetary tools to be able to avoid a recession if they can. Ryan wants to know if the feds cut their interest, does that affect our debt to the US and our interest rate? 
it has a ripple effect on us, but it does affect our debt, I believe. Um, I won't say I'm an expert in that field, but yes, it does have a ripple effect. on Everything that they do in America does have an effect on our economy here. So Lanestra is bringing up Japan. I don't know if you were following what was happening yes. in Japan yes. last week. As you said. They raised their their policy rate to zero point two five percent. So not they were at zero percent. They were at Actually, zero. They had negative interest rates at one point. You had negative. to pay the bank to hold your money. <laughs> <laughs> and the ra raising the rate to zero point two five led to chaos over there for a couple of days. I think things are get, getting back on in a normal trajectory now. But it also came along the same time as the jobs numbers in the US. So the, one came before the other and it caused a ripple effect everywhere. So I was doing some research as to what in the world was happening in Japan and the Asian markets. A lot of people were messaging me asking about it. And apparently because Japan had such low interest rates, 0%, zero. you could borrow money. Years. You could, what was that? It was, it's, they've had a rate that low for 15 years or more. 15 years, was that long? Didn't realize it was that long. But because they've had such low interest rates, you could borrow money extremely cheaply in Japan at very, very, very low interest rates, 2 3%, probably very low interest rates. And so a lot of Westerners took advantage of that and would borrow in Japan and use that to invest in cryptocurrencies and stocks in U.S. markets. Right. So you're, you're borrowing very low interest rate and then putting it into something that's a little bit more riskier but would give you a much higher return. Higher return. And that way you benefit from the spread, from the difference. The arbitrage then, opportunity. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And then also there is the, the situation with the exchange rate. So when the Fed... Sorry, when the Japanese Central Bank, which is also called the BOG, BOG. <laughs> yes. raised their interest rates, it affected the currency exchange. So now you would be getting less USD to one yen. Japanese yen or less, right. less yen to one USD. And that just caused havoc. So people were trying to sell off their positions in the US in order to cover you know, their loans in Japan. And all of that led to markets in the U.S. falling dramatically, lots of stocks falling in the U.S. And then at the same time, you had Warren Buffett selling off 50% mm -hmm. of his Apple stock. It was just a whole lot happening at the same time. At the time. same time, absolutely. Right. And a lot of other countries have recently announced changes in their policy rates as well. I think the U.K. announced theirs last week. They lowered the rate from 5.25 to 5. So a lot is happening in terms of policy rate movements. Now I think, I think people are you know getting over the effects of COVID and trying to, to and this economy is becoming more stable across different countries. So a lot of countries are looking at, at what they can do to, to adjust their rates downwards. So Japan moving theirs upwards was a shock to everybody's system. So a couple of comments here. Philip says, ain't no recession going to happen in the U.S. <laughs> an election year. The chair of the Federal Reserve, Philip, he said that his adjustments to the policy rates have no, if they're not related, they're not political. So he will not do anything, any adjustments. He said, that. He's not going to do no, any he's adjustments. Under because immense of pressure. He's <laughs> under crazy pressure right yes. now. Yes, he is. He has he to is. say that. He has to say there's no nothing political, <laughs> but I yeah. know there have been some late night phone calls. I'm Absolutely. sure of it. Now, Learn Grow Invest has a great question. What does a drop in interest rates locally mean for equities? Very good question, Learn Grow Invest. Um, so when interest rates are low, that means persons have more opportunities to uh, well, first of all, when interest rates go lower, savings rates also go lower. So not only is borrowing cheaper, but when you see those the, the interest you're paying on your savings account, step one is that that interest rate is going to drop. So even though it's minusculely low now, more than likely, it can go lower once interest rates go down. When that happens, people don't want to keep their money in savings accounts. People are not interested in doing that because the interest that you get on your savings accounts and even your um, your equity, your like your what you call it now, unit trust, etc. Those those accounts that you can put money in and you know it just stays there. 
when sorry not unit trust um fixed deposits when you can put money in there and it just stays there and grows and you don't have to think about it those type of accounts don't become very attractive when policy rates go down so what persons will typically do is that when policy rates go down they invest more in stocks they invest more in things that have a better reward better return for the money that they're putting in. So that's typically the impact. Stock market prices or stocks will typically go up when interest rates go down. That's usually so how I've been telling you guys, now is the time <laughs> to take your positions in stocks because the interest rates are on the verge of coming down, which means when those come down, smart money will start moving into stocks where they can get a higher return. Stock prices will start going up. I saw a comment earlier because we asked the poll question about how has your investing strategy changed now? And I saw somebody say, oh, they're not doing anything now. They're waiting for the bull market to come back. When the bull market comes back, it's too, too late. late. It's too late. <laughs> By that time, it's too late. It's too late. You need Your to buy. Remember, <laughs> remember the objective of investing, the objective of any trade is to buy low and sell high. And right now is when it's low. You want to wait until the prices go back up to buy? And then what? You're going to sell when the prices fall because you get scared? Yeah. And then you lose money. It's the opposite of what you're supposed to be trying to do. So great discussion, Jillian. Do you have anything else that you want to mention before we go? No, well, just keep smart with your money. Follow what's going on. Listen up for those interest rate announcements and act accordingly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, one last question. Life Roots. Life Roots wants to know, do you think the Fed is going to cut interest <laughs> rates or print more money? No comment. <laughs> I don't, I have no idea. We're printing more money <laughs> during COVID. <laughs> where that got them. Anyway, yeah. thanks again, Jillian. You're Great welcome. talking to you. Good Love speaking with you. Thanks everyone and good night.